is being recorded. For any councillor who hasn't done so, I would like to ask that you turn on your cameras now. Please can I also ask that you turn off any telephones or put them onto silent mode and to remove any possible distractions. Any councillor who wishes to speak should use the chat function and type a comment such as me, speak or next. The chat box should only be used for members of the council requesting to speak, voting during exception votes and requesting technical support. You can also use the chat function to indicate that you would like to raise a point of order or a point of personal explanation. Can I also ask that members indicate through the chat function if they are intending to leave the meeting? Right, we'll now go on to my personal statement. The fact that the agenda item number eight, the planning services external review, has been withdrawn from the agenda and will be discussed at a planning meeting before any uh, decision is reached at this committee. <sighs> Ashley, you wish to speak? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Chair. Um, can you tell me the reason why it has been taken off this afternoon's agenda? Can you also tell me uh, if there are workshops taking place this week? And if there are workshops taking place for members this week, will they be open to members of the public? And will they be open to members of the council? If, if not, then they must be regarded as a secret meeting, which I would like to object to. There are no secret meetings, and I object to those comments. The meeting uh, of the planning committee has not decided that report. So I feel it is not incumbent upon this committee to discuss anything that the planning committee has not agreed to or come up with. Can I please ask if there are workshops this week and whether all members will be entitled to attend the workshops? I'll call on Councillor Reid to answer that. Um, hello, uh, members. Um, thank you for asking me, Chairman. Um, the members of the workshop, uh, the, the workshops are, uh, are a consultation between planning committee members and uh, officers. Um, they are also a way of uh, communicating and strengthening the relationship between officers and, uh, and committee members. Now, that's the, the point that we are. Um, I would have been happy to have um, obviously spoken on the agenda item, Chairman, but I understand uh, your decisions for changing it. After those workshops have taken place, I should be very happy to correlate the uh, workshops findings of both committee members and officers and to share them, of course. Chair, uh, Councillor Reid hasn't answered the question. The question is, are all members welcome to the meeting, to the workshops? No, I, I've made the meeting for committee members and for um, officers. So it's a secret and I meeting. stated the reason why. So Councillor Dilks, please. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you. Um, I, I will be attending the workshops. I've got to say, as uh, the virtual workshops, uh, they were going to be face to face, but um, obviously because of the lockdown now. Um, I understand they are um, virtual. Um, the, I think the question is, um, I understand um, what Robert is saying about the, um, um, you know, it's only the planning committee, but there are substitute members of the committee, aren't they? People who have been trained. And I just wonder if we are going to um, talk about the Kratos report, you know, whether it would be a, an idea to have the people who are actually trained as well at the meeting. But that's... That's my question. And my, my question really, though, was, um, Mr. Chairman, um, I was um, I did want to um, uh, come and listen to the debate on um, the planning um, report that's come in, the Kratos report. 
Um, and I would like to ask, you know, why it has, I, I mean, I think the first thing is, is I'm pleased that it has been withdrawn in a way because we were assured it was going to go and be considered by the planning committee first um, before any sort of uh, moves of, uh, to change the constitution as necessary um, are considered, presumably by the constitution committee. But I think the question really is, it's a fair question to ask, Mr Chairman, is why was it on this on this committee's agenda in the first place? I quite agree, and that's why I've withdrawn it, because I thought it should go to planning first. And, and the discussion this afternoon would be irrelevant without their input. Yeah, I, I accept that, and I, I thank you for doing that, uh, Mr Chairman. Um, but now we've almost got, I don't want to say the worst of all worlds, that's the wrong um, phrase, but the on the agenda for today's meeting the the creators report the planning report we're talking about is published for the first time um now i'm all for openness and, and transparency but it, it, i'm just questioning why it's this committee that's actually published it mr chairman i wish i knew the answer to that phil <laughs> no, i don't um well, if I may say, Chairman, the reason it was coming to you is because it's an external report and it's best practice. That's why it was coming and that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that I was trying to be um, transparent, honest and open about it as well. Then why can't we come to the meetings? OK, I'll t uh, I have no problems as far as I'm concerned actually with anybody coming to anything. But what I'm trying to do is to build up um, firsthand with officers and with the planning committee members um, the workings out of this report. When I've done that, I am very happy to open it next tranche would be to open it to substitute members a very good idea and then after that i'm happy to talk to every member of the council and every member of the public in the way that we endorse it but i'm oh, just trying to do it in a structured way and please give me that grace to actually be able to to deliver that way and the quest of doing it uh, mark whittington please Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thanks, Anne, for I, I think it's the uh, I think it's the right decision not to consider this report uh, this afternoon. Uh, I think actually, you know, the, the, I think the point's been made. It does really need the planning committee to consider it first, uh, actually. Um, and I appreciate the, the comments that Robert um, made in terms of once the meeting with the planning committee has taken place, he's willing to then open this up to other people for their comments and views because. Certainly from our perspective as a Governance and Audit Committee, our role at some point in the future will be to monitor the progress against the, the action plan when it's agreed. So I think there needs to be, if possible, Mr Chairman, some kind of formal way in which the views and comments of the Governance of this committee um, it should be fed into the process at some point. Because obviously, you know, as I've just you know, alluded to, uh, you know, our role will be to monitor the, uh, the 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 performance um and i think it's important that we have some sort of input into the sort of the performance measures and indicators that 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 we would like to see thank you mr chairman thank you uh, a Mark. point of oh. information chairman Please carry on, Robert. There's some tranches of this, uh, of the findings and the endorsement that we eventually finalise that will also need to go to the Constitution Committee too. That's my point, yeah. Thanks. Well, that, that's Thanks. fair comment, yes. Um, I'm on the Constitution Committee as well, so I'm, I may get another look at it there as well. Thank you. Uh, Karen Bradford, what required to speak? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I hope I can probably help uh, with some of the debate here today. Um, the, the report was came forward to you today as it was undertaken, as Robert said, uh, by Councillor Reid, that it was an external uh, review of a service. Uh, in your constitution, you do look at in 11.5.4 about the regulatory framework. 
even though this isn't regulatory, it is a quasi-judicial committee of this council. Uh, and we're not just looking at the committee, we're also looking at procedures as well. So it thought it was reasonable uh, that it would be put on today's agenda. However, I understand why members uh, want to delay the discussion on this one until the workshops of this week. However, I think it's also just worth noting, uh, as Councillor Reid said there, it does also need to be reported to the Constitution Committee if there are any amendments to proposed procedures or processes. Um, and then, of course, if, the, if that is then supported by the Constitution Committee, then that would then be reported to Council to, to seek approval uh, of any of those amendments to the, to the Constitution moving forward. Uh, members of Audit and Governance, this report was put before you. It's an external service report. It's with full transparency about you've already had one workshop on the, on the findings of this report. Uh, and as Councillor Reid is saying, you know, there's, there's a further workshop this week that is looking at what are the looking at developing some of the actions to, to respond to the recommendations of this report. Some of the recommendations may not go any further, but some of the recommendations could be uh, enacted quite quickly and in support of looking at improvements to our planning service. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Yes, well, we are going to bring it back once the uh, planning committee has had a look at it. Uh, uh, I'll take a few more. Paul Wood, please. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, what I'd like to say, I, I totally support your uh, withdrawing of that of that report. Uh, I, I think it's quite right that it goes to planning committee first. Uh, and I think it's also quite right that at some point in future it does come back to our committee. I mean, we are a governance and audit committee, so I think it's right that we do keep an eye on it from a governance point of view and monitor monitor what, what, what's happening to it. So I'm quite happy with that. My other thing is it really a plea to Councillor Reid. Uh, I do think if you're having workshops on planning, the substitute members of the planning committee ought to be invited as well. So I would ask Robert, Councillor Reid, if he could reconsider that and invite just the substitute members as well. So thank you. Uh, Councillor Reid, to respond, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I will take the consideration on um, on board. However, uh, a lot of the considerations that we make in planning are done uh, in consultation and very much uh, cross-referencing with each other with the Chair of Planning, Bob Adams. So together we'll look at it um, and we'll make an invitation later um, if we feel it's suitable at that point. Thank you. Uh, Penny Mills, please, quickly. Yes, very quickly. I mean, I'm just querying how it can be best practice to have brought this report um, to this committee at this time. It seems very premature to me um, without first consideration by those reported on and relevant to it, the Chairman of Planning and the Planning Committee, the Constitution Committee. I mean, we've only had a presentation. And whilst accepting... Uh, the need to move this forward. I, I fully understand that. We do have to do it in an orderly fashion. And, you know, it just concerns me that this has been rather a, I, you know, a bit of an oil slick presentation to this committee that actually everything is okay when there are issues around it. So um, I, I would just like to fully understand how it, this has happened. I do understand the urgency that Karen talks about. There are some things in there we, we could probably get on with, uh, but there are these queries that go with it, and they are substantial queries, some of them. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think the Chief Executive explained all those details, and, and as a former Vice Chairman of Planning, I do understand the need for what is happening. Um, I think that concludes all the speakers. Um, Mr. Uh, Chair, if possible, could I speak again on this, if possible? Yes, if, you, if you'd like to, very quickly, because Thank we need to move Chair. on. I mean, uh, as the county councillor, I mean, last week at the planning committee, we had the, the planning application around the developments in Barrowby, and actually, if you read through some of the recommendations of the Craters report, you know, some of the f faults and issues raised by that 
were very much apparent in, in, in that Barry playing application. But I'm just wondering if even though other members can't participate in these workshops, is it possible for us, for us to just be allowed audio access? So at least we can listen to the tenor of the debate, because certainly as members of the Governance and Audit Committee going forward, it would be really useful if we could if we could actually at least know what what the planning committee discussed in their workshop in, because I think that would help us to frame the governance arrangements going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Robert, can you respond to that? Uh, yes, I can with the greatest of pleasure, Chairman. Uh, they, the purpose of the, um, the consultation being between planning committee members um, and officers I have before mentioned about uh, relationship and working the working through um, the uh, the uh, report in two halves. Um, I don't have any problem at all. And the only reason I didn't want to expand on it is I want to keep, I'm not saying it wouldn't be constructive, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to actually um, build out on it. So I wanted the planning committee members on board first. And I think to be fair, they're owed that privilege. And, that, and actually, if we had had this come to committee today, it was to note the report that it was happening happening and to come back in six months with what we'd found anyway, albeit has been withdrawn. I am very happy, very comfortable for everybody to be, whoever would like to listen in has the open invitation, the greatest of pleasure, but uh, participation for the reasons said, I want to build it out solidly, constructively and in an organised fashion. So that I'm going to stick to for Tuesday and Wednesday. Thanks, Robert. If somebody could send us the link so at least we can listen in. I just, see that that's done for just, all of you with just pleasure. So, just so we can follow the actual nature. Yes, of course. Thanks, yes. Robert. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's end of the discussion. I'm not impressed with Ashley Baxter's comment. That was totally unnecessary. Um, right, we'll now go on to uh, agenda item one, the register of attendance, membership and apologies for absence. Shelley, please. Chairman. Councillor Gloria Johnson. Present. Councillor Philip Knowles. Present. Councillor Jackie Smith. Present. Councillor Ian Stokes. Present. Councillor Mark Whittington. Present. Councillor Paul Wood. Present. Received apologies from Councillor Sue Woolley. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, yes. Uh, we move on to agenda item two. Uh, members are asked to disclose any interest in matters for consideration at the meeting. If you'd like to put any comments that you've got, if you have any, in the chat box. There appears to be no comment, so that uh, nobody has got any interests at this stage. <laughs> Item three, minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of November 2020. Well, due to the uh, frequency of meetings at the moment, unfortunately, these meetings, the, these minutes have not been approved as yet, and uh, they will be approved together with today's minutes at the next minute meeting. So there are no updates from that. So we now go to external. Um, Councillor Adam Stokes requests to speak. Yep, sorry about that. Uh, no, I'd like to um, just uh, comment on a few of the the uh, reports that were out late. Um, obviously, that the statement of accounts were only approved late last week, so the time hasn't been given to um, to give them proper notice and also a strategic risk, risk register as well. So, I mean, I'm I, I do approve these reports, so it's on my head. But I'm just uh, saying that I do apologise that these were out late. But on on this occasion, we had no option with these reports. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Adam Stokes. We now go to the external audit, the audit 
or annual governance report? Is it Paul Harvey or John Gregory on this? I will speak if that's uh, that's OK. I don't seem to be able to start my video. I don't know whether you wish to see my face or, or, or not, but I suspect somebody... Uh, that, that's fine, as long as we get the gist of what you're saying. Indeed, yeah. OK, thanks, thanks very much. Good afternoon, uh, members. So, uh, yes, we're, what we're actually presenting here is, is not so much our annual governance report as our, our audit findings report, but uh, basically it's the... Um, uh, it, it's the results of our audit work on the uh, on the council's accounts for the the 1920 year, um, which I am statutorily required to uh, to give my opinion on the by uh, by close of play today. Um, so um, I, I think to start with, I'm, you, you'll be pleased. I'm not going to go in detail through every page of the the report. As as always, these these reports do have a, a lot of material in them, which is um, material that we are obliged by auditing standards to uh, to, to to put in there, um, and uh, which kind of attempts to, to close the loop on our audit plan that we we brought to you earlier in the year. Um, but by way of overall message, I think we've got got to a, a, a positive outcome um, with the audit. We've got a good uh, good statement of accounts that uh, I'm proposing to uh, to give an unqualified opinion on, and similarly an unqualified value for money conclusion. Um, I did, did just want to draw your attention to the fact that um, the audit opinion, um, and you'll have seen this from the, from the report, uh, will include what's called an emphasis of matter. Um, just to uh, stress that this is not a qualification of, of our opinion. All it is is an extra paragraph within our report which draws the reader of the account's attention to um, particular disclosures within the, the account, so things that you've already put in there. Uh, and in this case, what it's doing is drawing the reader's attention to the disclosures around the material uncertainties in the valuation of land and buildings and of uh, assets held by the uh, the pension fund, um, both of which are caused by the uh, impact and the uncertainties relating to uh, to, to COVID-19 um, around about the uh, the end of the financial year and in, indeed ever uh, ever since. That emphasis of matter is going into the audit opinions of virtually every local authority up and down the land. So it isn't something that, that you need to be uh, be concerned about. Um, I did want to just mention um, a little bit about the, the various issues that have cropped up um, al along the way with the audit this year. So um, you'll recall that we added in an additional significant risk to our audit plan arising from, from COVID. Um, and I think at, at the end of the day, that has had two main impacts, one of which is it, it simply required us to do more work in terms of uh, revisiting our audit planning um, and making sure that we dealt with all the risks around um, around COVID when we did things like our, our work on your going concern um, and and so on. Um, and then the second thing it, it did, it simply um, slowed down the, the, the whole process. It, it's been amazing how much impact remote working has actually had in terms of the, uh, the speed with, with which we've been able to, uh, to, to get through the, the work this year. And, and it's basically down to that sort of loss of informal contact between our teams and, and your officer teams and the sort of um, looking over over somebody's shoulder at a, at a screen to answer a query and, and all that that sort of thing because no no matter how good the um, the, the technology is um, it's it's made that that more difficult uh, another issue we've had specifically in South Stevens case this this year has been around the fact that for the first time you've done group accounts um, because of the increasing materiality of, uh, of, of Gravitas housing. So that required us to, uh, to do additional work. Um, and we've also had this prior period adjustment, which I'll talk about a little bit more in, in, in a moment. Um, and uh, I mean, re recently as well, I think that there's been um, sickness for a, a key council officer as, as well, which has, uh, has has meant that the burden on your side has has fallen on fewer people. But uh, but we've got through it. We're 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 here to uh, to, 
today with the the results of of, of our audit um so so the prior period adjustment i mean it, it's explained in in richard and allison's report which is the next thing on the um on, on, on the agenda uh, and basically it's to do with the the way that depreciation has um, been uh, charged in in your account both this year and previously um, and because it affects previous years as well you you don't just change the figures within this year you also have to go back and change the figures in the sort of comparator year that's also included in in this year's of accounts um I, ideally we we would have wanted a, a more detailed disclosure of the exact impact of of that prior period adjustment um on um different uh, di different figures within the um w w within the accounts but um we, we did only, only raise that specific um, concern this morning as a result of my uh, my my final uh, review of the, uh, the the accounts and it's not something that actually threatens our opinion on the um, on the accounts so uh, officers we we've agreed with officers to uh, leave things as 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 they are as long as as, as you as a committee are are happy with that um the only other kind of significant issue in terms of of errors was around the valuation of the uh, the council house and that was a, a straightforward one off error in the uh, in the floor area that was was given to the value book, which obviously then feeds through into the uh, into the valuation but that has been uh, been corrected Pleased to say that in the VFM conclusion, we've had no issues this year, unlike last year. So we identified the the risk around your financial resilience, did some some work on that, and we've set out our, our findings in the um, in the report. Um, and the other thing I did want to to mention, because if I don't, I'm sure you you will, um, is around the comments in there on um, audit fees. Um, and this links back to, uh, to to what I was saying earlier about how much longer the uh, the audit has actually taken us this year, um, and I think the the audit findings report actually quotes a, a, a figure of uh, of twenty five percent longer. I mean, I, I think to be honest, I and mean, we haven't got the final figures yet, but my sense is that audits are actually taking us about forty percent longer this year. Um, however. Um, we're certainly not intending to, uh, to to pass all of that additional cost on to onto our clients. We don't think that that's at all the right thing to do under the uh, under the circumstances. But what we are asking all our clients for is an, an additional fifteen percent on the um, on the fee to uh, to to cover that. Um, and um, just to, to confirm, in terms of the impact on your audit fee, that would increase it from forty-three thousand nine hundred to fifty thousand four hundred and eighty-five. Um, and then the other thing, in which we also mention in the um, in the audit findings report, is is the cost of the additional work around group accounts, which we think is about three thousand. So we could be looking at something just shy of uh, fifty-three and a half thousand as a uh, as a final fee as opposed to the uh, the 43,900 that um, that's that's in there but uh, no doubt you will uh, you will have your comments on uh, on that uh, I think that's probably all I need to uh, to say I know that some of you have been uh, indicating your your wish to speak as I've been uh, speaking so uh, yeah Paul and I are quite happy to, uh, to to take any comments try and deal with uh, with any questions that uh, that that you have Thank you for that, Mr. Gregory. Um, does your fee include the items on page 27 where the audit related services, the non-audit fees for other services, because that says to be confirmed? No, they, those are um, over and above the, uh, the, the the audit fee. So, that, so this is um, the the first two items there are specific grant claims which have always been outside of the the sort of um, PSAA um, audit fee setting regime, uh, and then the other one there, the uh, CFO insights that's, that's mentioned, that is simply a um, a subscription service that that Grant Thornton offers to uh, to access a, a database of information. And um, South Stephen, I, I think, actually took out a subscription even before we were the um, 
when we were the auditors, and that's simply the uh, the annual co- recurring cost of of that, which we have to just disclose for sort of ethical purposes, so that everybody can see exactly what it is that you're paying to Grant Thornton each year. Yes, but will that nine thousand seven fifty and three two fifty be amended upwards, or will that remain the same because you've not put any figure in? No, I haven't, I haven't put the figure in because we haven't done the work yet. Basically, the, the I perhaps should have made that clear. The, um, the the grant claim work is not done until after the the, the final accounts process. Um, so, uh, for example, the the housing capital receipts grant. I think the the deadline for us doing that is the thirty first of January. So the the final fee. Um, it's very unlikely to vary for the housing capital receipts grant because that's very straightforward. But with housing benefits, it does depend on um, how many errors we find in the additional, uh, the initial sample of cases, because there's then very strict rules set by uh, Department for Work and Pensions, which determine how much more testing we have to to do after uh, af- after that. So, so those those that well that figure particularly could vary could vary either way as well. I have to say. That's just our best estimate. Well, let's hope it goes down. Uh, Thank you for that explanation. Uh, Councillor Mark Whittington, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thanks, John, um, for for your opinion. Um, I'm a former uh, accountant in both local government and the NHS and private sector, so I'm I'm well used to to dealing with auditors. Mm -hmm. Uh, And as you say, quite often you can resolve issues around uh, the audit process. You know, the the informal chat over a computer and a spreadsheet can be really, really useful. And I I guess that, that, as you've alluded to, you've been denied that ability this year. And I I, I mean, I'm I'm assuming that that in terms of sort of looking at spreadsheets and things like that, not much has really changed because presumably you'd have been sent copies of it. Uh, But certainly when when organisations I've worked for, when the auditors come in, they normally sort of had their own room and they used to just go and take a whole lot of files out from the main finance department, 